Hi guys, today we're taking a look at Next Level Racing's latest sim racing cockpit. This is the GT Racer, capable of supporting direct drive wheelbases up to 13 newton meters. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So I'll be taking you through the setup, show you the adjustability you have on there, and show you how rigid the frame is when racing to give you a better idea if it's worth getting or not. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. The GT Racer comes in a really large box which is pretty heavy. Opening up the box, items are generally well wrapped in bubble wrap with cardboard to separate them but I found the shift amount was slightly bent inwards. I've laid out all the items you get in the box on the floor and in total you have 14 items to assemble which actually isn't a lot. You get an instruction manual with a number of bags containing screws, washers, nuts and some tools to assist with assembly. Let's get this set up. Start with the pedal frame and align it with the rear frame. Connect together securing with two bolts, washers and nuts. Do the same on the other side, then screw in the bolt and washer on the top on both sides. Take the center wheel support and bolt it onto the pedal frame using the longer screws with washers and nuts. Then take the side wheel supports and align them with a pedal frame and secure them using bolts, washers and nuts on the pedal frame. Do the same on the other side and then on the center wheel support, secure the side wheel supports with bolts, washers and nuts on both sides. Onto the wheel plate, align it to the wheel deck and screw in the bolts, washers and nuts to either side. Now onto the shifter mount. The top of the arm was a little bit bent, but I've managed to straighten it out using a screwdriver. You can mount the shifter on either side. I'll be mounting mine on the left. So the shifter arm will be bolted to the side wheel support, which should be pointing outwards. Insert the shifter plate to the top and secure underneath using bolts, washers and nuts. Then using a flat head bolt, secure through the middle of the shifter plate using a nut underneath. Then align the shifter mount to the wheel deck support to your preferred height and secure using bolts, washers and nuts. You also need to attach a bolt and washer at the side. Tighten all the bolts and nuts on the rig, making sure they're tightly secure using an Allen key and wrench provided. Now onto the seat insulation, which comes in two parts. Take the top half of the seat and remove the protective covers. Then loosen the pre-installed dome-shaped bolts and washers on either side. Then take the bottom part of the seat and remove the dome-shaped bolts and washers from either side. Align the backrest and secure it to the seat with the dome-shaped bolts and washers that were previously removed on both sides. Then taking the plastic recline a cover that comes in the packaging, cover the recliner system using a screw. Now tighten the bolts that were loosened on the backrest. Next place the seat onto the frame of the cockpit and secure it using bolts and butterfly nuts by inserting the bolt through the bottom and using the butterfly nut on the top to secure it in place. Moving on to mounting the handbrake plate, which comes in a small box and has a selection of accessories and tools. Remove the nuts from the back of the plate and reposition them further out. Then align it onto the shifter plate and secure underneath with the nuts. And finally, we can stick the acrylic panel to the front of the center wheel support. Take the double-sided adhesive tape and stick it onto the center wheel support at the top and bottom. Then stick the engraved acrylic panel on top. And that's it. It's as simple as that to set up. Timing wise, I'd say it takes one to two hours to set up, but it took me longer as I was filming at the same time. The instructions were pretty good, but I'd say it's worth having a ruler handy so you can get the right size bolt as there's quite a number of different sizes in the packaging. Taking a closer look at the GT Racer, it has a simplistic design with a carbon steel black powder coated finish, looking pretty cool. It has a GT Racer at the sides underneath the seat, on top of the acrylic panel and on the backrest with the Next Level Racing logo on top of the panel on the seat and the NLR initials at the bottom of the seat. The seat is made from PU leather on the back and side arms and has soft suede material on the seat and on part of the backrest with a red accent thread on different areas which goes really well with a black frame. It doesn't take up too much room and I've added the dimensions to give you a better idea of its size and worth mentioning it even comes with a butt kicker attachment in the packaging. There's quite a few adjustment points on the cockpit. On the wheel plate you can adjust the positioning of it by removing the bolts on either side and moving it backwards or forwards together with raising the height higher or even tilting it. The shift amount can be moved up or down on the wheel deck support by removing the bolts and sliding it up and down. Underneath the seat, you have a slider bar enabling you to move the seat backwards or forwards. And on the side of the seat, you have a recliner handle to adjust the recline angle on the seat backrest, which goes back quite far if you wanted it to. But just to note, there's no adjustment on the pedal plate, which already has a slight incline to it. 
I'll be setting up the GT Racer with my Phonetic CSL DD wheelbase with the boost kit that provides 8 newton meters of torque. My pedals are the Club Sport Pedals V3 and the wheel I'm using is a CSL steering wheel GT V2 with Club Sport Universal Hub V2 for Xbox. I've attached my handbrake and shifter together which will be mounted on the shifter plate and my TV is the LG C1 OLED which is 55 inches in size. I've got this all connected up to my PC which is a custom build from CyberPower which has an insane spec with a AMD Ryzen 9 7950X 3D 16 core processor, AMD RX 7900 graphics card with 24 gigs, 32 gigs of RAM and a 2 terabyte SSD. The rig supports a wide range of wheels, pedals, shifters and handbrakes so I had no issues attaching the phonetic gear as the screw holes lined up pretty well. So let's test this out. I've got my Phonetic CSL DD set to max torque at 8 newton meters, and the GT Racer feels good, easily able to cope with the direct drive wheelbase, but there is some movement on the wheelbase. If I aggressively move it, you can see how much flex there is, but it wasn't as noticeable when driving, nor was there any side-by-side -side movement. The seat was generally comfortable with good cushioning on the seat and back when racing, providing a good height. But I did find it a little bit tight around my shoulders, so if you had broad shoulders, it may not be a good fit. I did try adjusting the recliner and the slider, but the top half of the seat just didn't feel as comfortable as their GT Elite seat, which didn't come in as much on your shoulder area. The pedal plate feels solid and it doesn't have any flex as there's no adjustability on the plate, even when pressing down hard on the brake pedal. But to be honest, it would have been nice to have some adjustability as I would have preferred the pedals to be slightly raised more at the back. Onto the shifter mount and it was great that it came as part of the package. It did have some flex and movement on it and this really isn't surprising as it's only secured onto the frame with a single arm and there's nothing underneath to keep it stable. Plus I'm testing it with the phonetic shifter with the handbrake attached onto the side making it pretty heavy which doesn't help either. So if you had a lighter shifter it wouldn't be that noticeable but regardless you have the shifter arm and it does the job well. The general racing experience in the rig was pretty good considering the frame is made from a thin tube structure which coped pretty well with the phonetic CSL DD at 8 newton meters but you won't get the rigidity an aluminium profile rig would give you but nevertheless it did well. Space wise it doesn't take up too much room and it's compatible with a wide range of wheelbases, pedals, shifters and handbrakes together with having a proper seat. Price wise it comes in at the mid range point at just under $400 which is actually pretty good for the price. Negatives wise it's a shame there was no adjustability on the pedal plate. There is some flex on the shifter plate and if you had broad shoulders you may find the top half of the seat a little bit tight but nevertheless for the price this comes in at it's pretty good value for money. So there you have it you've come to the end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in description below including purchasing links. If you have any questions on this let me know in the comments below and for those of you who got to the end of this video please leave a comment with GT Racer as it's awesome to see who's got to the end of my video and hopefully Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You can follow me on my socials. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.